I'm here at the National Archives in Dublin, which holds the original place name books of the 19th century place name scholar, John O'Donovan. And I'm using them to plan my next journey, which will take me through Ireland's border region, starting in Mithfield, County Donegal, and travelling across the country to end in County Louth. Kunte Dunangaul, the fortress of the foreigners. John O'Donovan walked this very land 200 years ago and he recorded that he was attacked by mad, bad bulls and that he nearly drowned at Unthra Breagach, the deceitful strand. So on that optimistic note, I'm off to my first port of call, the Poison Glen. So to lead me on this voyage of discovery, I've recruited the assistance of a local woman, Moya Brennan, of the legendary Irish supergroup, Clonard. I made it, Moya, at last. Oh, Falche. Don Luja, Cugador, Don Luja, um, it's fantastic to be here. I kind of feel in ways as though I've walked into a, a clowned video. It's a really inspirational landscape, isn't it? It's just iconic and people just um, regard it as being very, very much now part of Don, Don Luja. I mean, you come around that corner, when you see just the whole vista in front of you, the church and everything, people just stop or just enjoy that vista. The, the place names around here, they have a beauty, but yeah. they also have a musicality to them, you know. They take Dun Luja. Dun Luja, is it? Dun Luja. Yeah, do you yeah. tell me about this place? Dun being a, a fortress. Lu was one of the two of the Danon that built a fort here. I suppose Guidor jumps out of you as a beautiful place then being home anyway. Oh, it is. Yeah. And, and Guidor is like if you, well, you know, it's a townland area. But Guidor is Gui meaning wind and Dor meaning the river. Uh, it's the wind coming up the river. That's the way I learned it from my grandfather uh, many years ago. That, How about that's what Gui Dor? Not, no, G W E D R. He means absolutely nothing, you yeah. know. Doesn't do it so, for me either, I have no. to say. <laughs> the place names, the Irish, we love plays. We have a great, very strong sense of plays, and it pops up all the time in, in Irish songs. Would you give me a bar of a song that maybe has a place name or two from here? Um, Glantown Lost Guidor. So, um, that's that means? Uh, the, the beautiful green fields of Guidor. It's one slave to Wirga, a Kondai Gunanam. A Gasyak, it's one Gunargolard, and the Strok is Kim Quidus Kong. A Moyevi Glant and Laskidor is Bagnavrish Makri. A short walk down from the church is the place and place name that really tugs at my imagination. The Poisoned Glen. This magical hollow, shimmering at the foot of Mount Errigal, is steeped in mythology and was a huge part of Moya's early life. You know, when you have this much space in your childhood, I suppose it gives you room to imagine, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. How does landscape influence the music? I think we allowed the, the atmosphere of the countryside and the mountains and everything to be part of our music. Like, without us realising it, especially the clannet sound, when people would say to me, you know, where did you get the clannet sound yeah. and that? And I'd say to them, just go to Donegal. And, and I've met people afterwards and said, I've been in Donegal, and I understand. It's that earthiness and that kind of ethereal kind of atmosphere and feel and space and everything. The royalty of like the mountains yeah. is just uh, exquisite. And mm. I mean, you could just sit and just mm. be calm. I suppose every good day out should have an old sus in the middle of it, shouldn't it? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. And I suppose like growing up here with the Gaelic language and the music, the stories, yeah, yeah. and everything, like the stories of Glen Never, you know, the Poison Glen. You know, you have Erigan there. So I knew well of the area and the significance of it. To the extent that we ended up, you know, writing a song about here we are in the Poison Glen, uh, myself and my, my uncles, because it meant a lot to us. Something from long ago. 
And you know, it's funny that you would name it Peace the Poison Glen because it's a very curious name. What is the origin of it? I mean, that's an English name. Um, it is, but Glan ne never. There are three, or at least three different, um, you know, stories, as you can imagine. You know, any rock in Ireland has a story, yeah. but and, and they all vary. But um, first of all, the one that uh, uh, being Glan never, um, it could have been lost in translation because it's very close to Glan Neva, which is the, the heavenly place, oh, um, right. heavenly Glen. When you look at it, it is like a little bit of heaven, you know, as well. So, so, na so Nava's heaven and uh, Niva's poison, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's one uh, theory. And then, then there's another one. There's a poisonous plant here that's called uh, Bonyakuyen. The English word is the Irish spurge. Spurge, yeah. Yeah. They reckoned that it was used, that Cromwell's soldiers had sieged the villagers. And the only way they were able to escape was they got hold of this plant they poisoned the water and they didn't touch it and they just got were able to get rid of everybody. But the, the one that goes back in, in mythological times is the story of Balor, who is the one-eyed ogre from Tory Island. A bit of an evil man, so they reckon. It was said that the only way that he could be killed was by his grandson. So he locked his beautiful daughter, Enya, or Etna, up in his tower in Tory. But Cian from Tuatha Danann got to her some way because he thought she was beautiful, and they had a son called Lou. Lou built himself a tower here in Dunluwy. Dunluwy, we're back to Dunluwy again. Whichever way they enticed Balor to come here, maybe to face him, he was ready for him with a hot spear in his hand, and Lou was called. Lou and Lao Father, which is Lou the Long Hand. They got him on a, a lock, a stone over here. He couldn't face him because he was the, the eye of, of death. So the, he put the, the, a hot spear through his eye and the liquid from his eye spilt all over the stone, um, split the stone and it was poisonous. That's how he died and the poison then that came out of his eye was Reckon that's why Poison Glen is Poison Glen. I love this character, Balor. I mean, this giant ogre with the evil eye evil and the poison eye. I know. Out of him. The fact that, you know, where Balor was killed and the fact that we have a stone down here that people reckoned was where he was killed, and it certainly does get you thinking. Knowing those stories from the great writers and my grandfather and everything, that would have to be my favorite because it's just from my childhood. Yeah. Um, but I do like the idea that when I look at the Poison Glen, you know, it is a little bit of heaven for me. So, you know, I, I think it's Glen Nyawa as well. We 